Hey folks, it's Sam and you're here at the right place to know about the Mercury retrograde from Leo to Cancer that's happening here in August 2024. Mercury goes retrograde August 4th until August 27th when he turns direct in the sign of Cancer. I'm going to talk about what those things mean what Mercury is really about, the Mercury retrograde cycle, what that's about, and also how the Please like the video. Cycle, Clicking like um, helps a lot more than you know. It pushes the video uh, higher cancer in relevant and the video retrograde searches. Also, please is, leave a nice you know, comment. About, comments also help I'm also going to be know, talking about it for video each of the 12 signs. Many times course, with hundreds of yours, likes, there are only a dozen the comments the video and they can be disproportionately negative. So be positive. Let me know if you like this. Even just a few words really helps. So subscribe, Leo ring the bell, and be get notified about upcoming videos. In two areas of your life. And it's very important to understand that, so you stay tuned. Please like the video. Clicking like helps a lot more than you know. It pushes the video higher in relevant video searches. Also, please leave a nice comment. Comments also help more than you know as it raises the video in searches. Many times with hundreds of likes, there are only a dozen comments and they can be disproportionately negative. So be positive. Let me know if you like this. Even just a few words really help. So subscribe, ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Indeed, thank you for that and all the participation. So, as it says here on this screen, Mercury Retrograde, clarifying your success story. And then it says, transcending confidence and emotion to reach your goals, both in life and of life. What am I talking about? What is this guy doing? So, Mercury is really that story, that narrative that's going in your head. That's the way I kind of like to explain it in an everyday context. You say he's the speaker, it's communication, it's details, it's flexibility, humor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all of these things are there. But the way you really experience Mercury, it's what's called the buddhi or the intellect and the way we experience it again is that narrative, that story that's going. We're telling ourselves some story about all aspects of life. You have this story about, oh yeah, my work is da 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 da, and then there's a story. Mercury is interpreting the things that are happening and telling you what it means. Oh yeah, my relationships are la da 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 da. My current relationship is da 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 and blah da 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 and blah da, da and how we try to make sense of things. That's what Mercury is, and I, I'm using very intentional language here because I want you to also ponder the fact that most of the time we're not really thinking. I didn't say that Mercury is that we figure things out. I'm saying it's the story we're telling ourselves about what's going on. Now sometimes the story is correct. And when Mercury is powerful, we're telling ourselves a good story. I'm, I don't mean a good story like, oh, yeah, I really like this lie I'm telling myself. A good story is a truthful story. It's an accurate story. It's a correct story. And that's what Mercury is really concerned with, getting it right, being correct, not telling ourselves what we want to hear so we can keep doing the same thing. That's not a good story usually. And that's usually what we're doing. We're doing some version of that, some version of confirmation bias. Generally what we're doing is we're doing what we feel like doing. I feel like doing it. And so we do it, even though it makes no sense. But then we have some narrative running in our head about why we actually did it or what we actually meant. Or we do something, obviously, let's say even something that's kind of maybe not mean, but you know, where we're kind of gossipy or we're kind of cranky or, you know, like a little bitchy or kind of like, <laughs> and someone, let's say, calls us on and goes, you know, you're being kind of blah, blah. And it's pretty obvious. And we know we're doing it. We don't usually go, oh, yeah, you know, you're right. I am. We're usually like, well, but they blah, 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 blah. And then we usually kind of walk away and we just kind of rationalize the thing in our head. Well, how much of what's really going on in your life is just that. 
how much of your life and identity and is that is you just like rationalizing everything you're doing and hardly ever doing anything differently so this is why i'm saying when mercury is really powerful we don't really do that as much we actually want to know what's going on whether it's right or wrong good or bad whether we're right or wrong or good or bad whether we look good or look bad we want to know what what happened because i can't make an adjustment i don't understand what's happening if it's not clear and the worst thing that can happen when someone is really driven by mercury let's say is when someone's driven by mercury they're also looking to see how let's say truthful others are how correct other things other people are well you said this and then you said that so you're not you're either intentionally not telling the truth or blah 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 and so mercury is that thing that's not just going to act in accordance with our biases and and our desire to win, which is Mars, but I want to win, or our desire to be inspired, which is Jupiter. But but if I think this thing, I'm not going to be as inspired. For, for, think of something like religion. It's so easy to just believe in this thing, but Mercury's like, yeah, but I don't want to believe. You, I don't want to believe it if it's not correct, right? And you know, like Venus. Well, but it makes me so happy. And Mercury's like, yeah, but is that actually the point? is the point to be happy like so mercury is trying to understand and figure things out and this capacity is what allows us to make adjustments in life and be and that's true intelligence that's why i say most of the time we're not very intelligent we're just using mercury to create a lot of stories that keeps us right where we are because we don't want to change nobody wants to change nobody wants to change they want to keep doing what they're doing and have it Set and have people go, yeah, yeah, you're right about everything. And by the way, I don't say people, me too. <laughs> and Mercury, when he's powerful, we realize, oh, I'm making all the mistakes. The mistake is I don't really understand what's happening. So this is the general nature of Mercury. When it goes retrograde, that story gets interrupted in one way or another. It's a good time for us to reflect on that story that we're telling ourselves, how we're managing all of these stories and all of these details and all of that stuff, right? It's a good time for us to, again, like navigate all of that and unwind all of the stories. And that's what happens, like to unwind, like the retrograde is to kind of go back and unwind it. And many times it'll happen because something that we're un unaware of will screw up and mess up something we haven't been paying as much attention to will suddenly come back and me and mess up and now we have to pay attention to it so this is really what retrograde cycles are about anyway all the retrograde cycles by the way currently we have several planets retrograde we have mercury retrograde we have saturn retrograde jupiter's going to go retrograde in october but i'm actually doing these rest of the 2024 assessment readings where i go over the current saturn retrograde cycle that's happening and that's happening until november 4th saturn retrograde and what are you really committed to and evaluating and are you on track with it so saturn's been retrograde for a while this current mercury retrograde that is about focusing sharpening um communication and using speech to empower yourself and others again this is the mercury retrograde in leo which is also that quality of leo is why i also said here why i also said clarifying your success story because you want to be successful leo is really about success i'm going to unpack that a little bit and transcending confidence which is leo and emotion which is cancer to reach your goals, both in life and of life, because you're in life as an ego, but you're not of life. There's also an of life, which is transcendent. So Mercury is really trying to do both in this context, trying to bring about your success as he's going through Leo and trying to figure out, you know, am I rising in life relative to my potential? Because that's really what Leo gives us, a certain potential to stay the course, to bring that vision out. 
And then he goes back into cancer where it's like, okay, I have all this potential, but that potential is really built on emotion and feeling. So I'm going to unpack that a little bit more. But again, as part of this reading, again, we have the Saturn retrograde cycle, which is going until November 4th about our commitments. And by the way, you can just go to that, that, that page here. I have it at my2024vedicastrology.com. This is also where you can see that that um, reading. But there's other things as well. There's also the Jupiter retrograde, which is starting in October 10th. Jupiter's in Taurus, reflecting on our teachings and the practical purpose. Are you putting those teachings into practice? And then also Mars is now, or he'll go into Gemini, but then between now and early next year, again, because Mars is, um, he's going to go through Gemini, then go through Cancer where he's debilitated. Into next year, we're going to have a difficult Mars. So again, how's that going to affect you? So again, if you have planets in Aquarius or even in Scorpio or Aries where Saturn is aspecting Jupiter, what is in Taurus, any planets in Taurus, any planets in Cancer and Leo right now with Mercury retrograde. We also have the solar eclipse in Virgo, October 2nd. Again, this is right around the corner. So all of these things are up for grabs right now. And of course, your chart and current cycles will also be looked at. So I just want to let you know that I'm also doing those things now um, in the midst of this Mercury retrograde that we're doing. It's happening in the context of other retrogrades. Like I said, when we have a retrograde planet, it's to reflect on things. Right now, we're reflecting on the Saturn commitments. We're reflecting, and are the things I'm really committed to worth it? Is it worth this time and effort and energy that I'm putting into life? I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a lot of that right now. And that includes things like our work and whatnot. Is it worth all of the effort that I have to put forth to get back what I'm going to get? So we're reflecting on that until November. Mercury retrograde, really through the month of August, again, clarifying the success story and moving beyond just confidence, which is the limited nature of Leo and emotions, which are the limited nature of cancer. So what's transcendent of that? That's what this cycle will be about. But then again, we have the Jupiter retrograde cycle, reflecting on our teachings. Are we putting them into practice in the sign of Taurus, et cetera? So really think about that. Um, and Again, you can uh, get the reading at 2024, um, my2024vedicastrology.com. So if we keep going here, though, as it says, clarifying your success story, this is a very good way of bringing out what I just said. Because, again, like I mentioned, Mercury is the story in your head and getting clear about that story in your head. How clear are you about, again, you put Mercury then in the sign and it's Leo, which is about, again, success, mastery, self-awareness in the world, in a worldly sense, it goes back into cancer, which is feeling connection and how these two things are connected. And by the way, you know, remember in this video, I'm going to talk about all 12 signs. So I'm going to talk about how it's going to affect you in about 10 minutes, but that success story, unwinding that success story for you. How does it, what's the story you're telling yourself about the Leo cancer area of life? And again, Leo is about all the great things I want to accomplish and all my, my uh, potential, my capacity, not just as a physical being in this lifetime, as it says, in life, both in life and of life, right? So you're in life as an ego, separate being, as a separate person, your soul, you're a soul being, but you're, you have a body and mind and emotions that are in this lifetime trying to unravel and elevate the Leo principle. What is my potential? And Mercury is there and he's going to go retrograde going, well, my he's there now going, well, my potential is this. I can do this. I can accomplish this. This is the story I'm telling myself about the Leo area of life. And again, the reason it's so important is because for each sign, that's a different area of life. For example, I'm a Gemini and Leo is the third house. And it's going to go back to Cancer, which is the second house. That's different than if you're a Scorpio, where Leo is the 10th house. And it goes back into cancer, which is the ninth house. So it's different, right? 
So these things are different. And so that's why we can look at the planet in the sign, but we, but we have to also get the ascendant that's going to personalize it for you. So again, um, but the general principle of Leo is that capacity for power and success. And the story we're telling ourselves about it. And for Leo, the lower form is confidence. And again, because we live so much through the ego, we think that the highest capacity is confidence. Understand this confidence is you, you only have confidence in the things you've already done, right? Like I've made videos online before, so I have confidence to do this, right? But I don't have confidence to start yodeling right now because I don't know how to yodel. So if someone said, yeah, but I'll give you a million dollars if you yodel. I, I, I might do it for a million dollars, but I'm not going to have confidence. It's going to be very good. And I would warn you, I'm about to start yodeling and I don't have a lot of confidence in this, right? Because I haven't done it yet. So Leo pushes us outside of our comfort zone. The, the evolutionary process of Leo and also the sun is to take us outside of our comfort zone beyond just confidence towards pure vision. So as it relates to things like your work and career and things like that, that's really very important because if you're going to grow in life, you're going to grow outside of your comfort zone. All growth exists outside your comfort zone. That's why it's growth. You haven't done it yet. And you need more than just confidence. You need faith. You need hope. You need vision. And the vision is like a mother's love for her child, for example, or the love that we have gives us a vision. So this is how the Leo Cancer Principle are very much related to this Mercury retrograde cycle. Because confidence in what we've already done really draws from a connection to the heart. The way that we can move beyond just confidence is to also be moving deeper than just emotion. Because again, confidence and emotion are all part of the same thing. Because I have confidence in something means that I feel I can handle it. Emotionally, I feel like I can handle it. But what happens when I'm doing something that doesn't have confidence, like let's say anything that you want to do outside your comfort zone, like let's say... I get offered an opportunity to go on Joe Rogan podcast and talk about astrology. Okay, I haven't done that before. That's outside my comfort zone. What feeling does that bring up in me? Well, I'm a little scared of that. I don't necessarily have the confidence. So am I going to do it or not? Well, you're damn right I'm going to do it because I'm not acting based on confidence. I'm acting based on purpose. And even though I feel emotionally a little weirded out, underneath it all, I'm devoted. I have devotion to these teachings. I have devotion to this purpose. Those That devotion of cancer is deeper than the emotion of cancer. So when we come from a place of devotion in cancer, then we come from a place of higher vision and purpose in Leo. When we just come from a place of emotions and how do I feel okay? Do I feel good about this thing? Then we're only going to act in accordance with our confidence and we're only going to have confidence in the things we've already done. And by the way, we might not even have that con That confidence might not be very consistent. Even that confidence level is inconsistent because maybe I don't have confidence today because I'm emotionally frazzled. So, well, I'm not feeling so confident today, so I won't do it. Because the emotional core, the source of Leo is cancer. And by the way, this is a principle. The signs feed on each other. The first part of potential of Leo comes from the last part of cancer. So when we reach that culmination of devotion in cancer, then we can start, then we can reach that culmination of vision and purpose in Leo. Otherwise, we're just on the surface of our emotions and acting 
with the surface of our confidence in Leo. And we're not really growing very much. And this is what happens in people's work and all that stuff. This is what I do for a living. I've been doing it for a living for more than 20 years. I'm working in an office. I'm working in IT. I'm working in tech. But I've always wanted to do astrology. I don't know, but but I don't feel like I don't know how to put myself out there. I am filled. I hate Mark. I don't want to. Same story, thousand times over. Yeah, because you're acting from a place of emotion, not devotion. And until that switches, until there's a switch, until you love that thing more, you're not going to do it because you're acting through confidence and emotion, not devotion and purpose. Leo is purpose. I have purpose and I'm not going to give up just because it's outside my comfort zone. In fact, that's going to be the thing that really motivates me, right? So these are some of the big indicators of this Mercury retrograde and clarifying your success story. Getting this clear, getting clear about this right now is a big thing. So I'm going to do the 12 signs now and how this is going to influence all 12 signs. But first, again, look over the this rest of the 2024 assessment where I look over the Mercury retrograde cycle for your chart, Saturn retrograde for your chart, the Jupiter retrograde cycle, which is coming up, Mars in difficult dignity into 2025, and the solar eclipse in Virgo, October 2nd. You can see. Here we're October, here we're August 2nd. It's only a couple months away. And these other retrogrades are happening before then. Before you know it, Mars is going to be in Gemini and then Cancer. Again, you I'm sure you have planets being that'll be greatly affected by these major shifts that are happening between now and the end of the year. So check that out again at my 2024 vedicastrology.com. So now each of the 12 signs, you take the principle I just described, all of that that I just said. I just said all of these things about Leo and cancer, this is the success story and that archetype. But now it's going to show up in specific areas of each person's life based on their ascendant. So for Aries people, it's going to be affecting the fifth house and the fourth house. So confidence and feeling as they relate to creativity of Leo and the deep intuition of the fourth house of cancer. So our intuition in the fourth house feeds our creativity in the fifth. The mother's love in the fourth house shows the devotion and creativity that she pours into the child. So for you, Aries, it's very dynamic because the house and sign indicators line up. Cancer is the fourth sign, and this transit is the fourth house, and Leo is the fifth sign and house as well. So for you, Leo, it's very dynamic. But then if we look at Taurus, for example, Leo is the fourth house, and Cancer is the third house. So this shows that devotion and the emotion of the third house, which is your instinctive figuring things out and how it leads to that inner confidence or that inner strength beyond confidence in the fourth house, right? So again, Leo is your fourth house, which is about inner strength and confidence. And cancer is the third house, which means that your ident your interests and whatnot are very, um, you know, you're very interested in these like cancerian emotional things, right? And then that, but you have to get clear about those things. And that leads to the inner strength of Leo in the fourth house. So it's interesting with Taurus because again, cancer is the fourth sign and then Leo is the fourth house. So for you, Taurus, there's just a lot of feeling and needing to get anchored in the heart during this shift. For Gemini, Leo is that third house about, about your interest and the courage to take things on and to understand things. But first, you need to really dial in your values and your value system and what's most valuable to you, which is cancer in the second house. So again, Mercury is going to start in Leo, the third house, go back into the second house. 
So first, this retrograde starts with, with all your interests, and I could do this, I could do this. But then it goes back into the second house and says, yes, but my core values are this thing. I need to remember and reflect that this is what's most valu valuable to me. Then when he goes forward again, those interests and those actions get clarified. That's the way it works for each of them. From Leo back to Cancer. So now for Cancer people, again, it starts in your second house and goes back into your first. So for you, Cancer, this retrograde is starting in your second house of family, values, money. And then it goes back into your first house and says, yeah, but who am I as a result of these things? Who am I in relation to these things? What is my essence and my identity beyond just my connections and my val and my family and my money? Who am I underneath it all? What is my unique nature and identity? So for you, cancer, obviously, it's a very personal shift because because you know uh, because mercury's in the second house of values and then comes back into the first house and then goes back into the second so values are things that are very close to us our friends family and things we have around us so for leo of course this is starting in your first house which is your identity who am i i'm this person who has these goals these strengths these powers this inspiration this purpose and then he goes back and and but what does that mean what is the story what are these capacities and then he goes back into cancer it's like oh there's all this hidden vulnerability i'm really not as strong as i think because i have all these hidden vulnerabilities that i'm i'm trying to hide these things for myself i'm not really sure who i am underneath it all and i try to hide it blah 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 this is a big quality of leo they try to hide their vulnerability and then Mercury goes direct again. It goes back into the first house and clarifies the story. So again, it's this cycle. So for you, Leo, again, it's the identity and then having to find that hidden part of you that needs to be integrated into your truthful identity, right? So for Virgo, it starts in your 12th house, right? So the 12th house is that hidden area of life where you may be feeling like you just kind of want to let it go and kind of surrender and maybe even kind of escape from it all, be alone. And, you know, figuring that out, like, how do I stay? How do I just kind of let go and make peace with everything? And then Mercury goes back into cancer in the 11th house and says, yeah, but I'm I'm part of this world. I can't just escape from it all. And the ambitions and the and the social pull of the 11th house and the, those higher things that you want to accomplish are going to pull you back into the world, so to speak, and realize, okay, this is what I'm still here to do. I have to be of service to those things. Again, this is for Virgo. And then after you get clear again about that social duty responsibility, then Mercury goes back through the 12th house. And you say, okay, so so these are the things that I can let go of. I can let go of these other things, but these, but the, this my social duties and responsibilities and and my desire to serve is also very important. I can't just escape from all the unpleasantness in life because I have all this, this these other things to do to accomplish. Libra, this happens from your 11th house back to your 10th house. So for you, Libra, the retrograde starts in your 11th house of higher ambition, social duties and responsibilities. Again, that includes things like you know, larger causes, humanitarian causes. And and then and then he goes back into the 10th house, which is about the power that you have. The 10th and 11th house are very similar. The 11th house is what you can do with the power you have, but the 10th house is the power itself. So again, you may be going through this, again, toggling through this ambition and sense of purpose um, issue. Because again, the tenth house, when when the when Mercury goes back into Cancer, it's it's about your work, career, duties, responsibilities, and whether they're in alignment with how you feel. So you may be feeling this like confusion about your ambition and what you want to accomplish because you're not in alignment with the impact you're making already. So again, 
10th and 11th houses are very similar in this way, but the 10th house is like the power we have based on where we're at. And the 11th house is what we can accomplish as a result. So these two things are going to be getting clarified for you, Libra. Scorpio, this is your 10th and 9th houses. So the retrograde starts in your 10th house, Scorpio, sign of Leo, which is about your higher ambitions, your desire to make a difference in the world, the 10th house, again, the career house. Then it goes back into your ninth house, which is which literally says, but is this in alignment with my teachings and my higher purpose? Is this what inspires me? Am I inspired by my work? And if you're not inspired by what you're doing, you can have a sort of apathy to your work. And this is often what happens in the 10th house. If it doesn't inspire us at some point, if it's just about making money, it winds up not being enough. So this is a big shift for you, Scorpio, around being in alignment with your, with your duties and responsibilities, being in alignment with your teachings. Sagittarius, this full moon happens in your ninth. I'm sorry, this retrograde cycle happens in your ninth house. It starts in the ninth which is about teaching guru, you know, guru's grace. But then it goes back into your eighth house of, in the sign of cancer, which is vulnerability, not being in control. What this means is that most of the time we go looking for a guru and, a, and higher teachings and religion, which is ninth house, after we go through the confusing realities of the eighth house and recognize those things we can't control our vulnerabilities in the eighth house so this is what you're working through sagittarius with this story and this power the power of your and the success in your spiritual life but it's built but it's built on your vulnerabilities and change transformation death things like that Capricorn, this cycle starts in your eighth house. So again, it's about success in eighth house matters, which are about managing difficulty and vulnerability and, and those things you can't control. So that's a big cycle. You're trying to figure out how can I successfully navigate these things I can't control, right? Well, then the moon goes back into Cancer, the seventh house, which is other people, which are the which are the origin of most of our eighth house confusion, is other people because we can't control them. We can't manage other people. They're always going to be out of our control. So for you, Capricorn, a lot of it has to do with the vulnerability that you feel around others, and whether or not you're, you know, again, um, able to navigate those emotional vulnerabilities navigate them successfully and success is often surrender and letting go to those things you can't control in the eighth house aquarius this retrograde cycle starts in your seventh house of other people and the agreements that you make with them now that can be romantic partners but it's also business agreements and other things where there's a negotiated agreement with another person so it's really the success of those relationships, like relationship success. But then again, again, then Mercury goes back into Cancer where it goes into the sixth house, which is about service, being humbled. You know, we have successful relationships because we're willing to be of service to the partnership, not just our desires, but to what the other person wants as well. We're willing to be again, of service, which can feel like servitude, but it's not necessarily that. But being humbled by the connection is what leads to successful relationships. So that's a big part of this for you, Aquarius, is being humbled by the situation itself. That's how you can be successful, more successful in the relationships is to be allow yourself to be humbled. And Pisces, this is the retrograde starts in your sixth house of hard work, effort, difficulties, life's difficulties, sort of cleaning up all the messes in our life. 
And being successful at that would mean not getting defined or pulled down into arguments and fights and whatnot. So when murder goes back into cancer, it's the, it's in your fifth house, which is about deeper devotion, reconnecting with what you love, reconnecting with the heart. Because when you reconnect with the heart and what you love, then all that hard work is just in service of the thing that you love. Like the mother loves her child, so all of the changing diapers and all of the unpleasantness doesn't feel so much like a burden. And in fact, it then gives her a lot of personal growth. We grow a lot through the sixth house areas of life because it shows our inner capacities and what we're capable of doing. So for you, Pisces, it has that quality, being successful in managing all the difficulties in life. So I hope this was helpful for people. And again, I really hope and encourage you to, to get the rest of 2024 assessment where I talk about these five big shifts. And of course, that also includes your chart and where you are in your dashas and whatnot. You can just go to my 2024 vedicastrology.com for that. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel.